Hi everyone, it's Janezi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel Nestle and to another vlog. In today's video, we have another history video starring my dad, of course, because he's the one who knows all the history between the two of us. And so today he's going to give you a bit of history about the town of St. George's. And currently I'm on Woolrich Road, which is above the Caranage. So we're just looking down so the background that you can see behind me, well, in the distance, is the Caranage. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy hearing more and learning more about the St. George's area. Alright guys, so as I said, we're joined by my dad today, Edwin Frank. So as, as usual, I'll leave his information in the description section below as well as on the screen. Well, we basically given thanks for a very beautiful day today when we have sunshine and breeze everywhere. And we're happy to be alive in the tropics. Right now, we've just driven on the Woolrich Road and we're looking down towards Fort George, which we hope to visit shortly. And at the same time, the section that is in the foreground covers what we call the Carinage. The Carinage itself is an historical name. The fact that prior to the British taking possession of this island after they captured it in 1762. The following year, the Treaty of Paris officially handed over Grenada to the British. So basically, before that happened, the carinage area was mainly used for careening of boats. That's a French word, which literally means turning ships on the side you know, to remove barnacles, to fix leaks, to do repainting, or generally, let's say, to repair boats. So the French word for that is carina. And it was on that basis that the British decided to give that roadway, that part of the horseshoe bay ahead of us, gave it the name Carinage. And that name has stuck. In fact, the Carinage has a very profound and rich history about it because of the several alleyways that join it, bringing it onto streets that have names that mirror the kind of governors we had on this island. The various governors like Governor George Scott, so today we have Scott Street in his memory. Then there is Matthew Street just over there. That's because of Governor Edward Matthew. When you look at Bruce Street, we remember that there was a governor called Charles Bruce. Now, Gore Street is named after Governor Francis Gore. And the first official British governor of this island from 1763 was a gentleman named Governor Robert Melville. And that's why we have Melville Street named in his honor. There are other streets with names that remind us of governors. For example, Lucas Street was named after Governor William Lucas. Then we have another governor that had a first name of William, Governor William Young. Young Street is named after Governor William Young. Sendall Tunnel also reminds us of a governor. He was here around 1894. That's the year when the tunnel itself was completed. And that's why it is called Sendall Tunnel. And other streets as well. Even Green Street is named after a British governor, Governor Charles Green. And we can look towards the fort and also speak in terms of the fact that there were so many names associated with it. Initially, it was Fort Royal. Later, that became Fort George. And then during the revolution, it was named after Morris Bishop's father, Rupert Bishop. So, a lot of people have known the fort as Fort Rupert. Now in looking at St. George's, we have to bear in mind that the initial town was built on a strip of land that separated the lagoon over there from the sea. And because of problems with flooding when it rained heavily, and that they had quite a few mosquito-borne diseases resulting. So when Father Pierre Labatt visited this island in 1700, he strongly recommended relocating to where the town is at present. Apart from the streets that remind us of all these governors, 
the buildings, some of which have survived the passage of time, so to speak, are of a Georgian and Victorian era. When we say Georgian, we're talking about the period of King George III, and then there was Queen Victoria, a Victorian type architecture. St. George's became the capital of Grenada simply because the first major fort for George was built between 1705 and 1710. Before that, however, there were fortifications up there, but not as elaborate as they are now. In fact, what led to major improvements in the fortifications there are events such as the Julian Fredon Rebellion of 1795, and also the attack by the French in 1779. That was on the 2nd of July, 1779. Thousands of Frenchmen using 25 uh, boats and sloops arrived on this island via what you call Dragon Bay. They came at night and unknown to the British garrison at Fort George and the Hospital Hill Fort, they were able to march inland and then attack the British garrison at those forts the following day. And because they never anticipated being attacked from the rear, what you found happening is that they capitulated. They surrendered without much of a fight. And later on, we saw works being done to improve, not just for George, but Five forts were built in the Richmond Hill area because of that particular invasion in 1779. Hence the reason why today we have Fort Matthew, Adolphus, Lucas, Fort Frederick, and what was Fort Cadogan. The bottom line is basically to say that the French were the ones who started those forts because they didn't want another nation to do them the same thing that was done by themselves to the British. So immediately after capturing the island in 1779, they forcibly acquired property belonging to William Lucas. He had purchased land in that area of there, Richmond Hill, so they took those lands forcibly and began constructing those forts. But four years later, the Treaty of Versailles in 1783 returned Grenada to the British and they, in turn, after analyzing the logistics and the, the justification and the, the logic be, behind building those uh, forts, they went ahead and completed them. They were basically completed in 1791, and at the time, the governor on this island was Governor Edward Matthew. That's why they named it Fort Matthew. Then the second son of King George III was Frederick, so they named the second largest fort, Fort Frederick. His tenth son was Adolphus, so we had Fort Adolphus. And because Mr. William Lucas was cooperating with them more than he did with the French, they named one of the forts after him. The other fort, which was meant to be a military hospital, they had called it Fort Cadogan. It is now Her Majesty's prison, because in 1880, the male prisoners that were held in what is today the Grenada Museum, were relocated. And then I think around 1907 is when the female prisoners were brought up there because accommodation was made to facilitate the arrival of the female prisoners. So I've said all of that just to say that the addition to Fort George was influenced partly thereof by that invasion in 1779. And then when Julian Fedor began his uh, rebellion on the 3rd of March, 1795, he had captured eventually all the parishes apart from St. George's. Therefore, it became necessary for further additions to be done to prevent Fedor from being successful. Remember, Fedor governed or ruled or was in charge of Grenada for 15 months. It started the 3rd of March, 1795, until the 19th of June the following year, when the British finally came and was able to defeat him. So again, looking at St. George's, which is within the parish called St. George, 
because you know when the French were here, the parish of St. George was called Bastère, meaning the sheltered side. Today, for example, what we call Market Hill, which goes down to the market, a market that was established in 1791, what we call Market Hill was originally called Constitution Hill, because the Dutch had something to do with Grenada, because in 1675, about 100 Dutchmen actually captured Grenada by storming that fort. It was not a long-lasting interaction because the French were able to drive them away. So, so it was not something that made huge impact on the history of Grenada. But that was in 1675, and they gave, uh, like, some parts of the town used to be called Upper Montserrat and Lower Montserrat. In fact, that's um, Tyrell Street or Echeble Street. Those were the names of that street. And by and large, the town has been made to tolerate the influence of the French, the British, and to a lesser extent, the Dutch. So the Sendal Tunnel was actually named after a former governor, as I hinted earlier, Governor Walter Sendal. And the point that needs to be made is that in those good old days, there was no connection between the carronage and the other side of town. If that's a guana, you're going to film it. I think it's a guana, but I can't see it. Okay. The other side of town, and the people generally saw Governor Walter Sendal as being a nice governor. And although he wasn't present for the actual opening of the tunnel five years later, his wife presided over proceedings. And today we have Sendal Tunnel. The Market Square, that area, it was around, um, they did declare it for military purposes prior to it being established as a market in 1791. That's a year, in fact, when market squares were introduced all over Grenada. St. Patrick, St. Andrew in Grenville, also in Guave, and in Victoria. Again, we're looking down at the Carinage. It's a volcanic crater. You know, Grenada has been called a moderately eroded volcanic island, and it was in 1902 when Mont Pele was erupting in Martinique. It is written that every indication of some level of connectivity was experienced. The way in which the water in that lagoon area there, in that carinage area, was responding while the volcano was erupting in a mouth of it. So here at Fort George, we are allowed several perspectives of the city and Grenada as a whole. One easily remembers the history as to why we found that the majority of buildings in the town utilized bricks and tiles because in 1771, 1775 and again in 1792 most of the town was destroyed by fire so the then British administrators felt that this was becoming too regular and that's when they decided to use the bricks and tiles that were dumped in what you call ballast ground. Because in those days, the ships coming to collect our produce came to the island with ballast, bricks and tiles, in order to cross the Atlantic Ocean. And when they got here, they dumped it in that area close to the lagoon that's called ballast ground. And it was after 1792 that the idea surfaced to use the bricks and the tiles to build so many of those original buildings. From here at Fort George as well, we realized that almost two decades ago, the town was much smaller than it is because it was in 2003 that 11 acres of land were created in order to build the bus terminus and the cruise ship terminal. So whereas in the past, when we drove out of the tunnel, we only saw seawater, today, when we drive out of the tunnel, we see buildings, buildings that are part of those two entities and also parking facilities for the increasing number of motor vehicles on this island. From here at Fort George, we also see what used to be part of the sea, 
that has become the tan teen playing field. Over a hundred years ago, that was filled in for recreational purposes. Even the port highway and most of what now make up the port were in fact created over time. When we went to school 50 years ago, there was no port highway. The sea was in that area. Also of importance to note in the context of how things have changed is that from here we see where electricity was first generated on this island from 1928 to 1963 it was generated using fossil fuel or coal in a place we called Burns Point and that's why it got the name Burns Point on the Carinage because they were burning coal to generate electricity however from 1963 they relocated to where they are in the Queen's Park area and when we say Queen's Park area that's the name that was given to that whole area when it was given as a gift by Miss Lucy Dabo to the people of Grenada during the visit of Queen Victoria in 1898. That's why the hill surrounding Queen's Park is called Dabo Hills because it was owned by Miss Lucy Dabo and it was her benevolence that resulted in those lands being given to the government and people of Grenada for sporting and cultural purposes. And that's where the two recently constructed stadia are located. Now, getting back to what we are viewing here at Fort George is the fact that so many of the buildings that we're looking at represent a mix of our culture. We see the original churches like the Methodist, Roman Catholic, Anglican, and Presbyterian. A lot of these were badly damaged, like most of the buildings in Grenada, because officially about 82% of the buildings were either damaged or destroyed during the passage of Hurricane Ivan on the 7th of September, 2004. Even here at Fort George, we still see buildings that are roofless as a result of that phenomenon back then. Fort George provides for a panoramic appreciation for this town. It allows us to see Hospital Hill. In fact, they call it Hospital Hill because the very first hospital on this island was built up there in 1736. And two years later, a fort was built. And that fort eventually was called Hospital Hill Fort. And later on, after the visit of King William, who was the son of King George III of England, they renamed it Fort William. So from here at Fort George, one is allowed to just absorb so much in unison, apart from the fact that one can get a special breeze coming off the Atlantic Ocean and passing over the island to this location. It also gives one a better understanding of how we emerged as a colony and how we have developed as a people to the point where we're at today. And right here within the parade square of Fort George is where the political disagreements of 1983 led to the implosion, the political implosion that took place. One must say this is where it culminated a very sad day in our recent history, indeed, where Prime Minister Morris Bishop and three of his colleagues, Jacqueline Kraft, she was the Minister of Education and Culture, Norris Bain, the Minister of Health and Housing, and uh, Unison Whiteman, he was the Foreign Affairs Minister. These four people were among a total of 11 folks who were placed against that wall and executed. It was more or less the culmination of an internal political misunderstanding if one may say so at the time so guys i really hope you enjoyed seeing fort george with me and my dad learning more about the fort about st george's about grenada and if you enjoyed this video if you like this type of historical vlog then definitely thumbs it up so i'll know and leave a comment letting me know your thoughts on it of course subscribe if you've not yet subscribed and turn on post notifications so you'll always know when i post a new video so thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in my next video bye